Are you looking for the hottest new sector in the GameFi space? Well then, this video is a must watch. That's because I'll be covering crypto gaming guilds. Decentralized organizations that could radically transform the way we view play to earn blockchain games. I'll be giving you everything you need to know about this revolutionary gaming model. I might also have a few of my own personal tips on the top guilds out there at the moment. So don't go anywhere. Before we get into gaming guilds, there is a disclaimer I need to shill. I'm not a financial advisor, and anything you see or hear in this video is intended purely for entertainment, demonstrational, and educational purposes only. Capiche? Now, if this is the first time I come across your screen, my name is Guy, and I think crypto is pretty neat. Over here at the Coin Bureau, we provide the best crypto knowledge around. Coins, news, token reviews, and market moves. But we try to do it with a bit of added flair too. Now, if that's something that you could get value from, then go on. Hit that subscribe button and ping that little bell. It would be mighty swell. Now, I know that you all have busy schedules, which is why I've broken up the video timeline into different chapters. Feel free to skip around to the parts you'd like to know more about. However, I would recommend you use it sparingly because you wouldn't want to miss out on any of the golden crypto tips I dish out. Okay, enough of this chatter. Let's dive in and see why blockchain gaming guilds matter. Okay, I'm sure that by now you'll probably have come to terms with the fact that blockchain based gaming protocols have turned into one of the hottest commodities in the world of crypto. And the GameFi sector is furthermore proving to be a sought after and ever more fascinating ecosystem within the digital asset space. This stems from the ability to combine gaming applications with the advanced features offered by blockchain technology, namely DeFi, avant-garde tokenomic structures, and cutting-edge NFT implementations. These blockchain-powered functionalities have, in turn, allowed for the creation of alternative game-focused economies built on rewarding players financially for their time, dedication, and effort spent during gameplay via DeFi and NFT in-game utilities. Now, throughout 2020 and 2021, blockchain-based gaming economies became crypto powerhouses, not solely for their gamification of DeFi principles, but because they progressively introduced a rediscovered use case for NFTs, one that makes use of their nature as true financial instruments. This new relationship between NFT-based in-game economies and player reward systems subsequently opened the door to what is now called the play-to-earn ecosystem. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep into GameFi here, but if you'd like to know more about this topic, feel free to check out my latest video on it, which I'll leave in the description for you. Play-to-earn and GameFi protocols have been all the rage of late because play-to-earn economies, apart from offering players rewards through gameplay and NFT ownership, have ignited a new community-oriented trend in the cryptoverse, gaming guilds. Okay, so before I can give you a full overview on blockchain gaming guilds, a brief historical analysis of traditional gaming communities might be useful. It'll outline the foundation required to properly understand what guilds are, how they came about in the first place, and ultimately the impact they're having on the current P2E ecosystem. That's right, it's time for History Hour with Guy. Since its commercial birth in the 1950s as a technological oddity at a science fair, gaming has blossomed into one of the most profitable entertainment industries in existence, with metrics pointing towards a future industry valuation of over $500 billion. Now, the first recognized example of a game machine was unveiled at the New York World's Fair in 1940, going by the name of Nimatron. The game, based on the ancient mathematical game of Nim, was played by approximately 50,000 people during the six months it was on display, with the early electromechanical computer reportedly winning more than 90% of the time. Fast forward a few decades, and in the late 60s and early 70s, the now behemoth game development studios Sega and Atari introduced the first arcade games, which were arguably the first social games. People would gather at local restaurants, petrol stations, and arcade centers to hang out and play single or multiplayer arcade games while draining their budgets one quarter at a time. 
I <laughs> probably would have been amongst them, given the opportunity. And by the 80s, arcade games in the US were reportedly raking in up to a whopping $8 billion per annum. And the main economic drivers of early gaming practices were indeed public and social. Now, when we think about social games, we tend to think of massive multiplayer online games or MMOs, like World of Warcraft, intense arena games such as League of Legends, or those sweat-inducing battle royale games like Fortnite. However, the concept of social gaming actually dates back almost as far as the early days of Atari. However, with the advent of digitization and the internet, social gaming has evolved drastically since then. In fact, with the emergence of online gaming experiences back in the 90s with MMORPGs, players began teaming up within communities called guilds or clans. They quickly built social and democratic structures within these early virtual worlds to coordinate around shared goals or quests and share in the spoils of victory or loot. Today, the same underlying social principles can be applied to the blockchain gaming and play-to-earn ecosystems that sees gaming communities around the globe cooperate and come together to perform quests and earn some of that mighty NFT loot in return. Here endeth the lesson. Now, technically speaking, blockchain guilds can be defined as an alliance formed around playing, progressing in, and monetizing blockchain-based games. These guilds typically take the form of decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, that work together to collectively acquire, manage, use, and monetize assets from a variety of popular blockchain game titles. These include the likes of Axie Infinity, Decentraland, The Sandbox, and many others. Now, if you want to learn more about how DAOs work, then I highly encourage you to watch my video on blockchain governance. That's hanging out in the top right for you. Now, speaking of Axie Infinity, this blockchain game's efforts in the development and popularization of play-to-earn, GameFi, and guild economies should not go unnoticed, however odd its aesthetics might be. This is because since its inception back in 2018, Axie has helped architect an entirely new genre in the gaming vertical and has since focused on building the infrastructure necessary for gamers to enjoy the benefits of advanced blockchain-powered gameplay while also profiting rather handsomely along the way. I'll leave a link to my video on Axie Infinity in the description if you want the deep dive. Now, with Axie being among the first to introduce a play-to-earn or GameFi concept to the blockchain sphere, the ability to earn while playing the game also led to the formation of what are commonly referred to as Axie scholarships. This is a system that sees well-established players and NFT holders, called managers, lend out their Axie NFTs to other smaller communities of players around the globe, called scholars, to generate yield on their behalf in exchange for a cut of the profits based on a revenue sharing model. This, in turn, led to the development of what we know today as a blockchain gaming guild. Now, we all know that NFTs have been on an absolute tear this last year. From fine art to collectibles, sports moments to fashion, metaverse land to games. And gaming NFTs were not exempt from the steep price appreciation seen across the NFT market. In fact, it's no exaggeration to say that blockchain gaming projects have seen meteoric growth in recent months, with platforms like Decentraland, The Sandbox, and Gala Games, to name a few, seeing their market capitalizations reach multi-billion dollar levels. Likewise, popular blockchain games have seen their play accounts explode over the last year. Axie Infinity, for example, recently crossed the 8 million player mark, out of whom almost 50% have never used cryptocurrency before. However, this staggering growth hasn't been uniform. Since many top-notch P2E protocols require users to invest in the game, whether by purchasing tokens, in-game NFTs, or sometimes both, this can at times run into the hundreds of thousands of dollars for a good team. For instance, some of these axes are currently going for millions. That's right, millions. And don't even get me started on land within the Axie Infinity metaverse. On top of that, blockchain gaming non-fungible tokens are largely monopolized by holders in economically developed regions, such as Europe, the US, and some parts of Eastern Asia. Now, the incredibly high prices on some of these in-game NFTs limit access to many gaming communities around the globe, 
who don't have the startup capital required to start playing some of these top tier play to earn games. However, as opposed to traditional gaming guilds designed as groups of players who routinely play together on a free to play basis, blockchain gaming guilds democratized the entire process of generating revenue via gameplay and take the concept of online entertainment to a whole new level. But of course, it isn't just the players who benefit from these platforms. Guilds also allow managers to maximize the utility and revenue generating capacity of their NFT assets by securely lending them out to scholars. What's more, blockchain guilds provide both managers and scholars with a plethora of up and coming opportunities in the play to earn ecosystem by allowing them to safely gain exposure to some of the hottest gaming projects in the space and helping them diversify their investments and maximize their returns. This is because guilds often get first access to digital land and early access to games, opening up a spectrum of opportunities that are not available elsewhere. And since most guilds are structured as full-fledged DAOs, they can also gain considerable influence over how the games they work with operate using their collective voting power to help ensure the longevity and profitability of the games. Speaking of structure, in order to properly understand how guilds work, I'm going to be referring to the model put forward by Yield Guild Games, YGG, as it set the scene for the majority of guilds currently on the market when it comes to organization and design. Full disclosure though, I do own some YGG tokens in my personal portfolio, so just so you know. The story of Yield Guild Games, which I'm now going to refer to as YGG because saying Yield Guild Games is surprisingly tricky, and its initial proof of concept date back to 2018, when gaming industry veteran Gabby Dizon began lending out his Axie NFTs to other players who couldn't afford to buy them outright. And by October 2020, it was clear that Axie Infinity had created an employment model that could help players in the Philippines generate additional revenue streams while also enjoying the gameplay. As a result, YGG was co-founded by Gabby Dizon and Beryl Lee in October 2020, and its primary objective was to introduce as many people as possible to the play-to-earn revolution spearheaded by Axie, particularly in Southeast Asia. Now, according to the YGG SPL light paper, and as part of its initial project roadmap, Yield Guild set some rather straightforward goals, these being researching and investing in profitable in-game NFTs, building a global decentralized P2E economy, generating yield through lending and borrowing NFTs, and boosting active participation in the guild. And now, just over one year into its existence, YGG is already one of the largest and most prominent of its kind, with over 250,000 members across its social media platforms and having expanded into a variety of different P2E games. Just like with the majority of guilds in existence, the business model implemented by YGG is based on producing real-world monetary value by creating new virtual worlds and supporting the emerging digital economy through the buying and renting out of top-tier NFTs to players. In its entirety, YGG is designed as a decentralized autonomous organization and its main architecture can be subdivided into its treasury, YGG vaults, and sub-DAOs. The primary aim of the treasury is to oversee the management of YGG's assets to maximize value returned to the DAO over time. The treasury also performs a series of economic activities such as the purchase of assets in the form of cryptocurrency, virtual assets in the metaverse such as land plots, simple agreements for future tokens, in-game tokens and NFTs that can benefit the development of the GameFi environment overall. On top of this, the Treasury provides guidance in events that involve debt, interest payments and acquisition of assets, including any buybacks and future fundraising rounds, for instance. Oftentimes, a guild's Treasury also performs all major financial operations such as accounting, audits, reporting and tax. Second in line, there are the vaults. Now, unlike traditional DeFi platforms that involve staking tokens to accrue yield at a fixed interest rate, or allocating tokens to a liquidity pool to earn a share of the collected revenue, a guild's DAO incorporates a slightly different methodology, in that its tokens can be staked into a number of different vaults. Each vault represents a compartmentalization of the token rewards derived from either one or all of the guild's revenue sources. 
For example, one of the vaults could be dedicated to the revenue from the breeding and sales of Axie NFTs, whereas another could be dedicated to the distribution of revenue acquired from NFT rentals. These token rewards generated from gameplay or NFT lending are distributed to guild members according to the portion of tokens staked by each individual guild member and the amount of revenue generated by the source assigned to the vault. All this essentially means is that as opposed to offering a traditional fixed interest rate on staked assets, a guild's vaults give members the opportunity to invest in the success of particular sectors within the guild's revenue stream. Now, I imagine that this will prove to be quite an appealing proposition for investors, as it would allow those guild members who want exposure to the revenue from the DAO's Axie breeding program, for instance, to stake their native guild tokens, such as YGG, for example, in a vault built specifically for that purpose. Moreover, there are also plans at YGG to develop a vault representing a basket of all its yield-generating activities, known as the YGG Super Index Vault. This will include returns in the form of rewards derived from subscriptions, merchandise, NFT rentals, DAO performances, and an index of all sub-DAOs. Oh, and speaking of indices, because of guilds' market structures, analysts are increasingly starting to view them as, quote, the blue-chip industry juggernauts potentially standing the test of time, with high-quality guilds effectively becoming a top metaverse index for the best games available to players. Now, that really would be something else. Third on the list, we have sub-DAOs. Now, a sub-DAO is arguably one of the most cutting-edge components within a guild structure. In essence, a sub-DAO is a specialized portion of a guild's main DAO and is centered around a specific game's assets and activities. For instance, there might be a sub-DAO dedicated exclusively to Axie Infinity players, another one to League of Legends, one to Zed Run, Illuvium, The Sandbox, Star Atlas, you name it, the list goes on. But what's particularly fascinating about sub-DAOs is that their members become citizens of the game that the sub-DAO is associated with, playing and working together to increase yield generated from gameplay. What's more, players within a guild sub-DAO can also use assets owned by the main DAO's treasury to better equip and strengthen their in-game characters and increase their potential of generating additional income. On a broader spectrum, the primary objective of DAOs is to automate the functions of an organization, and sub-DAOs can essentially streamline this automation process by compartmentalizing it into highly specialized fractions. Sub-DAOs also boast their own DAO-affiliated economies and forge a productive cyclical market ecosystem based on revenue shares with the main DAO in return for economic incentives such as gaining access to the most performant and utility-heavy NFT assets to generate higher in-game yields. Now, in parallel with sub-DAOs, YGG is broadening its horizons, quite literally, through the development of regional main DAO-affiliated geographical partners, such as the YGG Southeast Asia, YGG SEA, sub-DAO, another project I've invested in. Okay, with a guild's architecture out of the way, let's now look at some of the most promising blockchain gaming guilds in the space right now. Apart from YGG, the current gaming guild landscape is dominated by three major players, Merit Circle, Good Games Guild, and UniX. However, there is a huge number of up-and-coming platforms on the rise. While I don't have the time to cover each and every one in detail in this video, what I will say is that these guilds can, in fact, vary considerably in their form and function. But they all typically have certain entry requirements which users need to meet if they wish to become a part of the guild. For instance, this might involve contributing assets to the DAO, becoming an active member of the guild's community, assisting with tasks, training and onboarding new scholars and managers, or submitting proposals to the DAO. It must be noted here that many guilds require users to hold a fixed minimum of their native utility tokens to unlock access to additional perks and features, such as token rewards, co-investments, and early access opportunities, which could potentially be prohibitive for some players. That being said, given the clear-cut benefits that platforms like Merit Circle and Good Games Guild offer to all stakeholders, these guilds have witnessed sustained growth, both in terms of the number of participants as well as market value. For example, according to YGG's latest asset and treasury report, the guild has well over 14,000 official members, counts close to 5,000 active scholars, 
has acquired in-game assets from over 10 games worth close to $20 million, and in September of 2021, it reportedly paid out almost $900,000 to its members. Merit Circle instead recently recruited over 850 new scholars, has invested in many exciting first-person shooters and MMORPGs, holds over $7 million worth of in-game NFT assets, and the Merit Circle DAO realized over $1.4 million in December 2021. Having said that, there is a list of very promising guilds coming out of the GameFi sector, though I view YGG and Merit Circle as the largest and most prominent ones. This is down to their market capitalizations, active partnerships, community members, and ultimately their pioneering roles within the blockchain gaming guild ecosystem. GameFi, play to earn and gaming guilds represent one of the most promising ventures in the digital asset realm. But with all the unprecedented hype that's been circulating around the concept of blockchain gaming and guilds, in-game NFTs have turned into a really hot commodity. And because of this, the barrier to entry into some top-tier blockchain games has become cost prohibitive for some players. Guilds do in fact democratize access and offer gaming communities financial opportunity by enabling them to participate in these games. But a guild's future success in monetary terms is ultimately dependent on the success of the games it's associated with. If that particular blockchain game turns out to be a failure or the demand for its NFT assets suddenly reduces, a guild's sub-DAO dedicated to the monetization of that game's assets will inevitably suffer and, by default, affect the performance of the main DAO it's affiliated with. This essentially means that the primary economic drivers ensuring the success of gaming guilds are inherently connected to the success of the blockchain gaming industry and its native tokens as a whole. Thus, while I do foresee a bright future for both blockchain gaming and for in-game NFT use cases, I have come to view guilds as something of an indexing metric for the entire play-to-earn market, as they've come to embody a direct expression of the relationship between virtual asset supply and demand. Furthermore, the beauty of a blockchain gaming guild lies in its ability to diversify its NFT investments and gain exclusive early access to the most prominent games on the scene, ultimately increasing its profit and value potential. Because we're currently starting to see NFTs slowly but surely make their way into the $300 billion traditional gaming market, I would not be surprised if, at some point in the near future, we were to see blockchain gaming guilds exchanging and lending out NFTs to communities playing AAA games, Call of Duty, Fortnite, you name it. And while there might be some competition between guilds on the horizon, those with first mover advantage, the most functional DAO and sub DAO structures, and the best NFTs stand a fighting chance at long term glory. And who knows? I might even set my own guild up someday too. Guy Guild. Yeah, I kind of like the sound of that. And that concludes my video on gaming guilds today, folks. But I'm sure you'll have plenty of questions, so please don't hesitate to let me know and shoot me a cue down below. What do you think of blockchain gaming guilds and YGG? Are they the next big thing in GameFi? Are you bullish on crypto gaming? Now, remember to subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell if you'd like to keep getting the highest quality crypto content on the scene. Make sure you also check out the Coin Bureau Clips channel to get all the information you need on emergency crypto market, crypto project, and Coin Bureau updates right away. I'll see you all very soon, but until then, this is where else I can be found. TikTok, Telegram, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribing to my weekly newsletter will make your crypto life sweeter. It's packed with all the tips and tricks that will make your gains stick. And if you have some extra cash laying around for a Coin Bureau hoodie or tea, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for watching, folks, and I'll see you all very soon. This is Guy bidding you goodbye.